If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 101, Harry's Tale, 2. November 1994. Ministry of Magic. After order was restored in the Wisengamot, Harry continued, My name. I did not know my name, or rather thought my name to be Freak, as that what my aunt and uncle called me, until I attended the primary school meant for muggles. The council gasped again but remained in order. Where I slept. I slept in cupboard under the stairs. My Hogwarts letter was addressed to this very same address of cupboard under stairs, continued Harry Potter with the same expressionless face. The murmurings in the council increased while Dumbledore gritted his teeth. His was sure was going to suffer a severe backlash and defending himself was going to get difficult. Harry said further, about my parents. I knew that he was a drunkard and had gotten killed themselves in accident. Though there are a lot of things that I can say, I believe these few facts were enough to make everyone understand what kind of life I lived through. He sighed, pain for the first time audible in his voice, my cupboard was my castle and the spiders in it, the dragons I slayed. With his last words amidst the uneasy silence, Harry walked back to his seat. No one knew how to respond at all of these allegations. Minerva sitting on the chair had tears flowing from her eyes. Andromeda broke the silence her voice laced with poison and hatred, Albus Dumbledore, I don't know what to say. You preached in Hogwarts how James and Lily Potter were so important for you. How you wanted to keep their legacy clean, and then this is what you do to their last living symbol. Does not your soul tremble? Do you not feel any shame? Boomed her voice. She turned towards Madame Marchbanks, Madame Marchbanks, I request that the will of James Potter be unsealed and placed before the council. Charges be placed upon Dumbledore based upon what rights and provisions of wills he violated. Madame Marchbanks sighed, I believe, I am one of the most senior most members of the council, yet I have never seen such a scenario. Those were dark times, and a young boy whether because of his parents' supreme sacrifice or his own fortune gets us relieved of that terror. We all celebrate, yet no KNE asked where that hero is. We believed the words of a wizard, few even believed in stories of castle and dragons, she laughed sarcastically. Yet, no one wondered if he had been living well. We never questioned, if receiving no news about the savior of the wizarding world is actually a good thing. We failed. We all failed. I know no individual takes up the blame, yet we all failed. We trusted a man full of negligence and vague answers. Under his watchful eyes, almost an entirety of a Hogwarts turned into a follower of Dark Lord and what he did, he even that time spoke vague words about righteousness and light. We trusted such a man. She gazed straight into Dumbledore's angry eyes, tell me Albus Dumbledore, what is the use of all this wisdom you preach, when you could not even convince your own students to remain on right path. She did not wait for any answers, I am old and I know what I said makes no difference as it was all in past, even so I hope before I die I am able to do justice in this trial. I, Griselda Marchbanks, as the chief warlock, order to unseal the will of James Potter and Lily Potter and be handed over to Harry Potter. She turned towards Harry, Lord Potter, since it was your parents' will, I will not make it public without your consent. After reading the will, if you want to press fresh charges against Dumbledore, you should approach DMLE. Harry nodded with a sincere smile. She gazed towards Amelia, Madame Bones, as DMLE head, make sure that Lord Potter receives all help and cooperation from your department. Albus Dumbledore, till a judgment is delivered for this case or any future case Lord Harry, files against you. You are explicitly forbidden from making any contact with Lord Potter, declared Madame Marchbanks. But if such a need arises that you must interact as a headmaster and student, then it must be done in presence of three people. Madame Amelia Bones, Mrs. Andromeda Tonks and Professor Minerva McGonagall. I hope the three of you perform your duty sincerely and impartially. Her deep voice echoed in the hall, though very few points have been talked today, this has been a tough day for us. The hearing is adjourned for a day and will be continued day after tomorrow. Every member of the council was about to get up when a clearing of the throat sound drew everyone's attention. Everyone turned to see a pink-haired toad standing a seat behind the minister. Few groans of frustration were heard but the toad paid no heed and continued smiling. The generally outspoken minister had been inconspicuous today but now he had his back straightened. Dumbledore, already having a very very bad day cursed Lucius in his mind. This fool cannot execute a simple plan and calls him right-hand man of Dark Lord. This pink idiot will destroy everything. Chapter 102, Schemes in Motion Ministry of Magic November 1994 After getting the attention of the entire council, 
the pink-toed Dolores Umbridge again cleared her throat. Thank you, esteemed members of the council, began Dolores Umbridge, her tone condescending. Today has been a day marked by many unanticipated events. Great wizards like Albus Dumbledore have been treated as a criminal, she continued, though her tone remained somewhat reluctant. In all these chaos, we all ignored one major event. Harry Potter taking up lordship of five different houses, her arrogant tone back. Dumbledore sighed in defeat. He only hoped that this idiot would do no further damage. What he had directed towards, Lucius was to be done subtly. And knowing that the IQ Dolores she had, he only hoped that she does not blow it up. She almost sneered, we must question about the integrity of the method by which he achieved the lordship of the five houses. Houses like Peveril, Slytherin and Greyfinder have been extinct for centuries. We have no clear records of any of their descendants yet somehow on a random day, Harry Potter comes with lordship of these three houses. Dumbledore's anger eased a bit as till now she was doing a fine job. She had planted the seeds of suspicion and now it was left to water it and allow it to grow. We must question and he must answer, how did he pass the inheritance of the four houses? Black, Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Peveril? Even for Potter lordship we must ask and he must answer, how was he able to take up the lordship before majority? Her voice echoed in the hall. Although the entire Wisengamot, though, considered Dolores as an idiot, what she was saying was making sense in their mind. We don't know if his lordship are real. Even if it is real, then who knows what dark magic has Harry Potter used to gain these lordship that too even before he attended majority. Her eyes narrowed, till the time, the correct facts are established, we must put some restrictions on Harry Potter. I propose that a five-member committee headed by our Minister of Magic is formed to investigate the irregularities in the lordship of Harry Potter, she said regularly causing loud murmurings in the entire hall. I also propose, Minister of Magic using his powers as the chief of the wizarding government and using the agreement wizards have with the goblins, the minister imposes an order on the goblin nation to restrict Harry Potter at choosing the vaults of these five houses. He should only have an access to his trust vault. The moment these words left her mouth, chaos erupted in the council. The most noticeable among them were two particularly powerful magical pressure. One was from the well, as Minerva McGonagall stood up her powers on full display as rage was etched on her face. The second was from the member's seat as Amelia Bones stood up. Her magical power also on full display. You dare! She screamed. Meanwhile, Harry Potter remained seated leisurely only with a raised eyebrow. Andromeda was also expressionless as she stared at Dolores. Dolores flinched in fear, especially of Minerva as she was close to the undersecretary. Even so, she tried to remain impassive and continued. The minister must also direct the goblins to recover every single coin, books and atri crafts Harry Potter had already stolen from these vaults. The chaos had somewhat calmed down and they listened what she had to say further. Dolores continued, I also propose, that the minister restricts Harry Potter's access to the wizarding council and his voting rights till the investigation is complete. Harry, though, could have immediately taken action, he waited to see minister's action. He knew that Dolores would do nothing without, minister's approval. And it was not even an hour, before the minister had talked of cooperation and now his stance was changed so easily. He was intrigued. Dumbledore breathed some relief. Though he thought, it could have gone a bit better, he was satisfied with this. As soon as the Dolores was finished, the minister immediately stood up to take charge. His presence attracted more attention and focus from the crowd, it really have been a tough day for all of us. And Harry Potter taking his lordship is a big event, an unique event something that has never been expected. He chuckled, due to other Ewink events, it did not come as big as a shock than it should have been. He turned towards Harry Potter, Harry, I had to make a tough decision but as it places future of Wizarding World on stake, I cannot be partial. You should not feel worried, after all you are too young to hold lordship, let alone of five houses. He faced the entire Wisengamot, I announced the formation of a five members investigation committee under by chairmanship. Along with me is, Lucius Malfoy who has vast knowledge and experience in wizarding law and politics. Following him is, our esteemed Albus Dumbledore, though he is somewhat in unique circumstances, his expertise in these matter cannot be ignored. He continued, the fourth member, as Madame Amelia Bones would be busy as Rufus Scrimgeer. He as chief or would be very instrumental in guiding the committee regarding the laws of our world. Amelia scoffed at this but did not say anything. The minister added in last, and the fifth member is Tiberius Knott. Like Lord Malfoy, Lord Knott is a person with vast experience and knowledge in wizarding laws and politics. 
Andromeda crackled in an instant. She laughed loudly like a madman for first few seconds. Minister Cornelius, she said in between her crackles. Only a blind and idiot will buy your nonsense of impartiality. With the members of the committee you have formed, the idea of which in itself is rubbish, you talk of impartiality. And sadly this council is full of such people, she concluded. Chapter 103, Harry's Counterattack First of all thank you all for supporting my story till this point of time. Hopefully, you are enjoying my stories. From this chapter, the story will enter another phase where Harry will play the game aggressively. He would stop himself holding back, and the story which has already deviated from the canon will take even more sharp turns. In addition to that, I would request you all to leave an honest review of my story till this chapter. Please do review as it is my first time writing anything and your reviews will help me improve. November 1994 Ministry of Magic Cornelius Fudge looked at Andromeda with an expression of annoyance. Though he wanted to berate her, he decided to focus on the more important task. He ignored her and continued, to some people, the decisions I have taken and would be taking would appear harsh, but I am also bound by my responsibilities. Sometimes tough decisions are required for the betterment of society as a whole. Sitting amidst the crowd, Lucius had an arrogant smirk on his face. Though all this idea came from Dumbledore, he should definitely get more credit as the executioner. With his fine relationship with the minister, convincing him was an easy task. I know these kind of decisions should be judged by the wise and gamut. But in emergency, I must exercise my power. We cannot wait too long for wise and gamut to reach a decision. He continued further, the committee will place the findings in front of the council, which will take the final decision. Till then the following orders will remain in effect. He took a deep breath, firstly, the Goblin Nation is ordered to suspend Harry Potter's access to all vaults except his trust vault. They are also directed to recover by any means, anything taken away from these vaults. And, secondly, Harry Potter is suspended from any future council meeting along with his right to vote till Wisengamot takes a decision. Albus Dumbledore standing in the well was now back to his natural self. With his trademark grandfatherly smile, he had a serene expression on his face. Although he could not magically take back the five lordship of Harry Potter as he had been chosen by magic itself, he would have forcibly restrict all his perks as a lord. He would be a lord with no wealth, no votes, and no power. Even though, it would be unfair to Harry Potter, with Lucius as his aide, he would make it lawful. And Harry could nothing. Going against these orders would mean revolt against the ministry. Harry had only one option and that was to swallow all his pride and keep quiet. Minerva not far away from Dumbledore had an intense expression on her face. She was angry, extremely angry but as Dumbledore had planned she could do nothing. After, Cornelius finished his orders, silence hung in the air. The silence was broken by a deep sigh from Harry. He stood up from his seat and looked towards Minister. Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge, he drawled with eyes blazing. Cornelius was taken aback by the fear he felt from a young boy of age 14. Do you really think, you can do what you ordered. Boomed Harry's steely voice. You are a fool, a complete idiot, he declared. Do you think this throne like chair, I am sitting on is for show? With this Harry let go all the control he had on his magic. A tremendous magical pressure descended on the wizarding council. It was so intense, so powerful that half of the weaker wizards and witches were hard pressed to breathe. Dumbledore was in state of shock at the sheer display of power. He could not believe, a mere boy of 14 years had this much power. He was not sure if even he could take on Harry Potter. Harry unbothered continued in slow but forceful tone, Greyfinder. Slytherin. Peveril. All are primordial houses. What I do, what lord I became has nothing to do with the Wisengamot or the ministry. If you think you have any power over me. You are fool. Even in this council crumbles, even if a new council is formed my status would remain unchallenged unless you can challenge the magic itself. His face formed a grin, now there this lady called my lordship to be fake, to be obtained through trickery or black magic. If this large piece of chair does not convince you, why not give another proof? Dolores Umbridge snapped back against her chair in fright. Harry's grim eyes were boring in her soul. He chuckled, which house should I test? Maybe Peveril. Harry raised his phoenix wand, I, Harry James Potter as Lord Peveril declare a blood feud with Dolores Umbridge. As soon as Harry's oath was completed, two white light flashed covering Harry and Dolores. Magic accepted and confirmed the newly declared blood feud. 
It works, smiled Harry towards Dolores who was shivering in fear. Harry turned towards Lucius Malfoy, I understand it has been tough for you, Lord Malfoy but to think that you would live in delusion and ploy a scheme against me, but probably you don't have the brains to do it. Who helped you? You, muttered Lucius in anger pointing his finger towards Harry. You must be worried about Black Lordship, continued Harry. He smiled, here, let me show you one more time. Harry again raised his wand, I Harry James Potter as Lord Black call back all the debt owned by Black House to Malfoy House, to Crab House, to Goyle House and to Knot House. They have 24 hours to return every last nut along with interest. If not paid back, I want the money to be paid in life. There two screams of no, before a blinding white light covered five people, Harry Potter along with Lucius Malfoy, Lord Crab, Lord Goyle and Lord Not finalizing the recalling of debts. Lucius Malfoy slumped on his chair. Harry then turned towards Dumbledore. The old man's smile had vanished and anxiety was written all over his face. He was having a very very bad feeling that, something very very bad was coming in his direction. Harry turned towards Dumbledore, Albus Dumbledore, from the first day of first year at Hogwarts till my last day of third year, you were someone whom I looked up to. I somehow thought you to be a man of kindness, a man of empathy, a man of wisdom. Alas! I was too naive and innocent to understand all your manipulations. You really are a crooked man, Albus Dumbledore, said Harry. He continued further, you must be definitely worried about Greyfinder and Slytherin lordship. Let me show you, added Harry with an evil smirk. It took few moments for Dumbledore to register what was about to happen before he ran towards Harry, no. Chapter 104, Harry's Counterattack, 2. November 1994. Ministry of Magic. It took few moments for Dumbledore to register what was about to happen before he ran towards Harry, no. Harry raised his wand while Dumbledore too agile for his age was extremely near to Harry's chair. At the last moment, when Dumbledore was to pounce upon Harry, a magical wave erupted from Harry's chair. Dumbledore being unprepared was struck by the magical wave and was blasted away smashing into the other end of the wall. Harry with his wands raised said, I Harry James Potter as Lord Greyfinder and Lord Slytherin hereby strip Albus Dumbledore of his position as Hogwarts headmaster. From this onwards till eternity, Albus Dumbledore will not hold any position in Hogwarts. I hereby strip him of all the authority and by extension all the privileges he holds in Hogwarts. I hereby strip him of all the wards and runes used for the functioning of Hogwarts. At the moment, Dumbledore who was on the ground with his back against the wall felt his body being stripped of something. The wards, the authorities he held over Hogwarts was all forcefully and painfully stripped away from his body. He screamed in pain and coughed blood because of the backlash, no. Harry. This can't be. Harry paid no heed to the old man and faced the entire council. His presence struck fear into the mind of every person present here. His oppressive magic was still crushing every witch or wizard present in the hall. His green eyes were blazing with fury. With power. Harry stood tall, towering every wizard or witch present in the Wizengamot Hall. It has not been a lot of day, begun Harry, when Madame Bones had given me some good advice. She had advised me to think what consequences my acts would cause, she had basically asked me to remain politically correct. And I wish to do the same. These people, said Harry gesturing towards those he had acted against, forced me take steps against them. I may seem brutal but I have taken only political steps. Steps which I could take because of the power of the lordships I have. His voice boomed, I hope that the wise and gamot would act fairly. I hope that none of you would force me to move from political steps, force me take steps which would be much more unpleasant. With this Harry Potter operat away directly from the wise and gamot hall, unleashing another chaos in the hall. Just like Hogwarts, it was impossible to apparate in and out from the ministry. Seeing that Harry's this act was causing unnecessary panic, Madame Bones decided to calm the crowd. Lord Potter, can do it because of his status as Lord Greyfinder, Lord Slytherin, and Lord Peveril, she said. Lords of Primordial Houses has this privilege. November 1994 Unknown Location Lucius Malfoy was walking across a long hallway. Although his face appeared expressionless, his eyes were filled with fear. His steps were steady yet reluctant. Crossing the hallway, he entered a dimly lit room. Directly in front of the entrance was a chair placed facing opposite side. Even before entering the room, Lucius knelt on one knee, my lord. There was a moment of silence, which was broken by a slightly high-pitched voice. The voice was cold and chilly, Lucius. You have returned. What news do you bring? 
asked the voice. Lucius hesitated and stammered, My lord. Harry Potter, he is now. The voice cut off Lucius, Show me your memory, Lucius. Lucius nodded and using his wand extracted a white ball of light from his head. He waved it and it flew and landed in front of the chair. The voice went quiet busy in watching Lucius' memories. Lucius dared not get up from his knees. The silence was broken again by the voice. But this time sounded angry, extremely angry, Lucius, come here. Lucius was quick on his legs and arrived in front of the chair and again knelt down. Sitting on the chair was the ugliest looking thing Lucius had ever seen in his entire life. It was ugly, slimy, and blind but worse, a hundred times worse. The thing had the shape of a crouched human child, except that Lucius had never seen anything less like a child. It was hairless and scaly looking, a dark, raw, reddish black. Its arms and legs were thin and feeble, and its face no child alive ever had a face like that flat and snake-like, with gleaming red eyes. Voldemort screamed, how did that brat got so powerful? How? Why do he have so many lordship? I should be Lord Slytherin, he raged. Lucius was quiet. He himself had no answers. He also wanted to ask why are you not Lord Slytherin but Harry Potter is? Speak, Lucius, Voldemort shouted. I don't know, my lord, was what Lucius could only stammer. Voldemort picked up his and lying on the table next to him, Crucio. Lucius Malfoy screamed in pain. At first I thought, Wormtail would be enough for my plan to succeed. But that brat suddenly turned powerful this year. Now this. Raged Voldemort. Lucius who was lying on ground like a sprawled sack gathered his courage and stood up. My lord, he said in slow voice. We need to get rid of Harry Potter, immediately. Voldemort had calmed down, no, Lucius, I need him for my new body. I have waited for thirteen years. I will wait, but I need more power. Wormtail. Barty, and you are not sufficient, added Voldemort. This is a good time. Every high-ranking official in the ministry would be busy in dealing with the aftermath of all what Harry Potter has unfolded today. This is a good time, drawled Lord Voldemort. I need my most faithful yet the most powerful servant back, declared Voldemort and Lucius' eyes widened in surprise. Chapter 105, Letter to Sirius November 1994 Chamber of Secrets, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry After vanishing from the ministry, Harry arrived in his room in Chamber of Secrets. Dobby, called Harry. The enthusiastic house elf appeared with a pop, Master Harry, called Dobby. Harry nodded, get me something to eat. Something good, added Harry with pause. After the events that transpired in the council hall, Harry felt a sense of burden being lifted off his back. Till now, he had been holding back, playing push and pull games, especially with Dumbledore. But today, he had made his stance clear. He had chosen sides, his own side. Now, he would not need to hold back. It push comes to shove, he had full belief in his magical abilities. With Amelia Bones and Sinus Greengrass and other allies on his side, he had enough arsenal in his storage. And Minerva's reaction in the hall was almost a certain indication whose side she would be choosing. While Harry was busy, lost in his thoughts, a sumptuous meal was placed before him. Dobby bounced, Master Harry. How is it? Harry looked at the five house elves standing in front of him and could not help but chuckle. He could only imagine, how much they would have argued over who would prepare his meal. It is very tasty, complimented Harry. Hearing Harry's compliment, all their faces lit up in joy and then they they popped away. Harry completed his meal and lay on his bed. Timsey, he called. The Potter House Elf popped in. Master Harry, greeted Timsey. Has it come out yet? Asked Harry. Yes, Master Harry, replied Timsey and with a snap of her fingers, a newspaper appeared in her hand. She placed the newspaper in front of Harry. Harry looked at the Daily Prophet. It was a special edition especially published to report the happenings of the ministry. On the front page was plastered a moving photo of Harry with his wand raised, Dumbledore running towards him and then being smashed on the wall. Mayhem at the Ministry Today was a day marked with unexpected occurrences at the Wisengamot meeting. In what was to have been a Dumbledore trial had turned into complete chaos and mayhem by the end of the meeting. The first surprise of the day was the sudden presence of Andromeda Tonks Nay Black in Wisengamot. She supposedly have left her isolation to act as counsel and representative for Harry Potter. The second and the most unexpected of surprise came from none other than Harry Potter. 
In a very shocking move, Harry Potter claimed his seat of five Lordship Lord Potter, Lord Black, Lord Slytherin, Lord Gryffindor, and Lord Peveril. The newspaper then went on to describe all of what happened including how had he robbed Dumbledore of his headmaster position. The heading which had started into somewhat of a neutral reporting, slowly turned into scathing attack on him. Though he laughed and let it pass, he felt that if he truly wanted to build a favorable image of his own, he must get positive reporting. Harry after going through the newspaper pulled out an envelope from his coat. Timsy, said Harry. Deliver it. Understanding what she had to do, Timsy nodded, took the envelope and picked up the newspaper. And then with a pop she was gone away. November 1994. Unknown location. When Timsy reappeared, she stood in a dark room with a small lamp flickering at the side. The room was very small in size, with a small bed being the only furniture in the room. On the bed lay a man with dirty appearance and a starving stomach. He had long hairs which had not been washed in a long time and a overgrown beard. The moment Timsy appeared, the man very much agile to his condition, turned in a quick motion and lunged at the house elf. Timsy vanished before the man could reach her and popped in at some distance away. Mr. Black, she said, stilling the man. I am here to deliver a letter from Master Harry Potter. Sirius whose expression was unreadable said in hoarse voice, Harry. Timsy nodded and placed the newspaper and the envelope on the bed. Before Sirius could ask anything, she popped away. Although Sirius was suspicious, his eyes caught the front image on the newspaper. His eyes widened at the image and he picked up the newspaper to read what was written in it. The more Sirius read, the more shocked, he became. Things he had not known came to his light. By the time he finished reading, he had tears flowing out of his eyes. Even if the newspaper had viciously attacked Harry, how could he not understand what was propaganda and what was reality? With shaking hands, he tore apart the envelope and opened the letter. Dear Sirius. I hope you are doing fine, enough fine to be alive. Sirius also chuckled a bit at this. Since you last me, a lot of things have changed here. If you are reading this letter first, then read the newspaper I have sent along with it before reading the letter. I don't know how to begin or how you feel about me having the Black Lordship. I will explain the Excat situation when we meet, I can tell you this that if I did not take up the Lordship, it would have passed to Draco Malfoy. Sirius sneered at Draco's name. He personally had no such interest in Black Lordship but it came to be claimed by the Malfoys, he would better burn the every last bit of Black Legacy. After reading the newspaper, you must now know what all is going on here. I am writing this you to tell you to return back. I believe, I have something in mind that can help you to get free. I am not writing too much in this letter. When we will meet, we will talk. Till then, I have arranged a safe place for you. Rest and recover well. And oh. You will find few wands there. Choose one and hone your skills back to your prime. This letter is a port kea to that place. My father's animagus is its password. Harry James Potter. Stag, muttered Sirius and disappeared from the room. Chapter 106, Changes in Hogwarts November 1994 Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry After sending Timsey to deliver his letter to Sirius Black, Harry had nothing particular to do and so he went into a deep sleep. While Harry was sleeping, unaware of the happenings in the wizarding world, the entire wizarding world was in chaos. The moment the Daily Prophet along with few other minor newspapers were published and delivered to the wizarding population, mayhem had erupted. Everyone was discussing the happenings of the Wizengamot. While a rare few defended Harry's actions, a majority population was unsure about their stance and they could only wait for the further drama to unfold. Meanwhile, a significant population had already termed Harry Potter as the Uprising Dark Lord. Similar to the Wizarding World, the Hogwarts was in even more frenzy especially considering that Albus Dumbledore being removed as the headmaster was something which directly affected Hogwarts. It was the dinner time and entire Hogwarts student population was in the Great Hall. But unlike usual when everybody would be focused on selecting what dishes to eat and what not to eat, no one had their mind on the food. Even the food devourer, Ron Weasley had enough space left in his mouth so that he could speak. And what he spoke, he left no stone unturned to convince the Gryffindors that Harry was a rising Dark Lord. And of course that Dumbledore would return back. A particular table, the Slytherins had a gloomy atmosphere on their table. They were mostly happy that Albus Dumbledore had been thrown away but Harry Potter doing that pulled that happiness down. And added to that, Harry Potter being Lord Slytherin made them extremely uneasy and tensed. The atmosphere at the teacher's table was also filled with anxious. 
without any headmaster, they were unsure about how to proceed, especially Minerva as the vice headmistress. Technically, she should have taken over the role of the headmaster but she herself was confused and could not wait to talk to Harry Potter. But like usual, she could not find him. Even the Hogwarts elf, whom she had sent to deliver her message to Harry were unable to find Harry. She could only wait. Also a certain bat looking like Professor was absent from his seat. At the moment, the large wooden gate of the Great Hall opened with a bang. The noise in the hall silenced and everyone looked at the new visitor. Harry Potter still dressed in the same robes, he was wearing in the Wizengamot hearing walked between the Ravenclaw table and Hufflepuff table with an expressionless face. His footsteps echoed in the hall, until he reached the podium of the teacher's table and turned around to face the students with his back towards the teacher's table. I believe, started Harry. You all must be aware, by now, that I am Lord Greyfinder and Lord Slytherin. For those who don't understand, he continued, let me clarify. Hogwarts is not a government-owned institution. Its ownership lies with the four house of Greyfinder, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff, divided equally among them. Since no lord was present for any of these house, the ministry managed it through a board of education. The entire student body, hung on every word coming out of Harry's mouth and so did of those students from Bosbatons and Dumstrang. Harry continued, but now that I have taken over lordship of Greyfinder and Slytherin, I own half the Hogwarts and since the other two houses still don't have a lord, I am the sole decision maker. Harry's declaration brought few gasps from the student body, especially from Muggleborns who had till now not understood the significance of Harry being Lord Slytherin and Lord Greyfinder. The first decision which I took, said Harry, which you all know, was removing Albus Dumbledore from his position as Hogwarts headmaster. Some may say, I did that for my personal agenda and I agree. But remember I own Hogwarts. Even so, in Albus Dumbledore's reign the quality of education have went downhill at Hogwarts. He was an incompetent headmaster. At the moment, I believe even the best of Hogwarts, with rare exceptions, could cast more than few basic spells. Harry continued, now there are few more changes which are going to happen some to be implemented immediately while some to be implemented by next year. First of all, Professor Minerva McGonagall will temporarily take up the vacation position of Hogwarts headmistress. Her appointment should have been welcomed with cheers, especially from Gryffindors but they were still reeling from shock. Harry turned slightly facing Minerva, Professor McGonagall, Hogwarts was run by a board of education having many prominent families as the seat holder. I believe, even the ministry would have set aside funds for the functioning of Hogwarts. Also, barring a few, most of the students pay a considerable amount of money in fees, said Harry. Then why the quality of everything used in Hogwarts, from brooms to books to potion ingredients remains so poor? His voice boomed in the hall, Madam Prince, cannot get funds for new books, Professor Sprout does not have funds to expand her herbology garden, Professor Sinistra, is using years-old telecope in her classes, Professor Hooch, is using decades-old brooms. The castle has not been repaired in decades and classrooms have to be abandoned because, the school did not have money for renovations. Everyone's mind got moving and the professors who had a better understanding reeled in their shock. Especially, Minerva felt heartbroken from inside. She knew very well where it was going. Where did all the money go? Asked Harry. He did not wait for answer, I want you launch a quick investigation into Hogwarts accounts since Albus Dumbledore took over as the headmaster. If need be, contact Gringotts. They would be more than happy to send some competent accountants to look into the matter. Minerva nodded absent-mindedly. Chapter 107, Changes in Hogwarts, 2. November 1994. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Harry's announcement was followed by a stunned silence in the hall. Almost everyone with a basic working brain was certain of where the money went and that the investigation was a mere formality. Either the money would be lying in Hogwarts' account, which was not very likely or has been squandered by Albus Dumbledore. Only the blind and dimwits like Ron Weasley, did not understand the reality. Harry again stood with his face towards the students, a small smile on his face, the students should not be punished because of incompetence and corruption of a certain someone. To immediately solve this crisis and get Hogwarts back to its glorious days, I am donating 100,000 galleons to Hogwarts' account. The entire student gasped in shock hearing this announcement while Ron Weasley dropped his food and his eyes had widened like two saucers, 100,000 galleons. Harry continued, I want everything that is of either inferior quality or old to be replaced. No more book shortages, or malfunctioning brooms. Better quality of herbs and potion ingredients. 
The other big change, continued Harry. Which should be automatically understood but I don't have that much confidence in the IQ of Dimwitz at Ministry. That the Board of Education which administrated Hogwarts would have no role to play in Hogwarts operation. Instead, a Hogwarts Advisory Council would be formed whose members would be nominated by the owners of Hogwarts which is me, said Harry. Its details would be announced soon. The major decisions regarding the school and its operational rules and procedure including the funds which I have donated would be governed by this advisory council in collaboration with Hogwarts headmistress. The night was long and Harry was just starting, the other thing which is going to change from the next year is the system of houses, house heads and points. First, about the house heads, said Harry gesturing towards the professors. From next years, being a house head would be a specific and full-time job. The professor already busy with teaching students of seven years have little time to deal with their houses. The three house heads has tensed expression on their face. Harry continued speaking to the heads of the houses, I know you all will feel sad but by next year you need to choose between either being a professor or a full-time head of the house. You must understand, what I want. Incidents like Luna Lovegood, happened because you did not have time to care about your house. Bullying is a common thing in Hogwarts yet the professors remain unaware or pay no heed to such matters, said Harry. Flitwick's expression turned sad at this. Now, coming to the point system working currently, Harry continued. The point system is completely useless and fraudulent. It is a whim of professor which house he supports. A professor may give one point to one student for answering a question but will offer five points to another student. He chuckled, I know a certain someone who deducted points for breathing out too loud and gave points for dressing well. The point system is joke. Further after hating the other three houses, you win the cup and then what? Just a cup which is again placed at Hogwarts entrance. He declared, all this system is obsolete and so prone to partiality. All this would be replaced a new system set up in place. For instance, the advisory council will come up with a proper detailed plan on how to award and deduct points. The professor will not go beyond that. They will follow the rulebook in awarding and deducting points. He continued, in addition to that, every point awarded or deducted by the professor will be jointly discussed and approved by the four heads of the houses every day. This way an impartial system would be ensured. Also the future point system and competition would be structured in such a way that not only will it instill discipline and motivation for study among students but also promote inter-house unity and harmony. In addition to that the points you earn will have value, a real value. Roughly, I can say that let us say they using points you may be able to access more books in library, said Harry. Or say receive certain privileges. Although I cannot say into detail but I ensure that by next year a lot of new things would be added to Hogwarts where you can use the extra points. Since we are discussing house system, there is another thing to discuss, added Harry. There will be no more differences between the privileges enjoyed by the houses. For example, why Slytherins have separate dormitories but Gryffindors share one dorm between four students. Because a certain headmaster who was the previous head of the house Greyfinder thought that it would promote friendship and did not care about privacy or the friction it may cause. Every single student will have a separate room. If possible from this year, if not definitely from the next year, announced Harry. If the need would be arise, the area for the dormitory would be expanded. This privilege does not count something a house has built upon its own, like the Ravenclaw Library. Their library is built with donation of books and notes from their ex-students. So it will function as they wish, announced Harry and the Ravenclaws heaved a sigh of relief. Harry walked two steps ahead as and stood closer to the students, now the most serious issue must be addressed, which is the falling quality of education at Hogwarts. The syllabus we have, the teaching method we have are all outdated and almost redundant. All of it must be upgraded, boomed Harry. Everyone including the teachers moved on to their edge of seats waiting for Harry to announce his next words. Chapter 108 Changes in Hogwarts, 3. November 1994. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Harry's crisp voice echoed in the hall, the deteriorating quality of Hogwarts education is a serious issue which must be dealt seriously. The same syllabus has been continuing from decades. When was the last time when someone made new development in magical field? When was the last time, a student of Hogwarts came up with some innovative magical theory or idea? Questioned Harry. Let alone research and innovation, we have gone down so much that even basic spell casting has become difficult. Students who can cast a simple disarmament spell or a basic shield can be counted on fingers. Harry's voice boomed, in respect to all these, following changes should be made. Since, sighed Harry, 
the changes in the syllabus can ultimately only be made by British Wizarding Examination Authority, I can only send these proposals, which I would try my level best to implement them. First of all, the elective courses. Care of magical creatures and muggle studies are in the same group as arithmancy and study of ancient runes, which is totally bizarre. These subjects are on totally different levels. Then divinity? Not to demean Professor Trelawney, but can divinity be actually learned? No. It comes naturally. Said Harry. Harry continued, I would recommend to place these electives in different groups, based on their levels and such a method be constructed that every student has to go through same level of rigorousness. I would also recommend that few vocational subjects like magical wine brewing, clothes manufacturing or other such professions be introduced in our syllabus either as regular classes or clubs. A student after graduation must have some skills to find himself some employment, announced Harry. This particular proposal was made keeping the muggle-born or poor pure and half-bloods in mind. Rich pure bloods had no such requirement for petty skills. For them getting a job at the ministry was almost a certainty as long as they wished. Another change I want is addition of a new core subject to be taught through all the seven years, continued Harry and the whole Hogwarts listened with intrigue. Till now all his proposals had been quiet intr staying and has intrigued even those who had an inherent dislike of Harry. He continued, I am recommending the addition of dueling as a core subject. Harry's announcement was met with gasps from the Hogwarts crowd. We learn many spells either in charms, transfiguration or da da but we never learn to integrate them, we consider da da as a dueling substitute which is a flawed method, continued Harry. Even if Wizarding Examinations Authority reject this proposal, I would make arrangements for a permanent dueling club led by some competent professional. Every student must be competent enough to at least defend himself or herself. If needed, Hogwarts would even fund our students to participate in national or international dueling tournaments, added Harry further. Similarly, another subject wizarding society, politics and laws either as a proper elective subject or a club would be added in the curriculum. Harry added further, very soon. I will announce the members of the Hogwarts Advisory Council which will then send a formal proposal to the Wizarding Examinations Authority regarding these recommendations I made. If any one of you have any other suggestions, you will also given a chance to represent yourself in front of the Hogwarts Advisory Council. Harry turned around and faced the teachers, professors, you all should also prepare what all change you want regarding your classes and what more funds you require. Harry then eyed Minerva, has he left? Minerva answered though her tone was somewhat painful. As soon as he heard that you are now Lord Greyfinder and Lord Slytherin, he packed his things and left away. Harry of course was talking about Severus Snape. He questioned further, did he not breach his magical contract by abandoning his post without notifying a proper authority? Minerva sighed and shook his head, no. After he left, I checked records. Apparently, Professor Snape had no magical contact like other professors. Harry nodded. It seems that he was only serving Albus Dumbledore and whatever contract he had was with Dumbledore only. Harry again turned around towards the students, you heard our conversation. Severus Snape have run away from his post. Professor Minerva will shortly look for a potions professor. He gazed questionably at Madame Pomfrey, till that time, I believe Madame Pomfrey can manage the potions classes along with temporary head of Slytherin House. Madame Pomfrey nodded, yes Lord Potter. As a Medi-Witch. I have sufficient knowledge in potions. Harry nodded, thank you for your hard work. I also have a personal announcement to make, said Harry drawing the focus even more on him. I am setting up a foundation. Lily James Foundation, which will be funded by me, said Harry. He continued, it will work on two fronts. Firstly, it will provide scholarship to poor students, a certain number of individuals each year will be provided with a scholarship amount. Secondly, this is for the professors, added Harry. His announcement was met with curious gaze from the professors. If any professor wants to do an advanced research on their subjects, Lily James Foundation will bear its cost, announced Harry and all the professors had their eyes widened in shock. Not only this, continued Harry. Even professor can take up to maximum of two apprentices at a given time under them to help them in the research. The foundation will bear the cost of the apprenticeship as well. The already shocked professors were even more shocked. The only condition is that for an individual his or her apprenticeship cannot last longer than three years. He added further, I do nor want the great legacy of our professors to die just because, you did not have sufficient funds to take a disciple or apprentice. With this Harry walked straight out of the great hall and disappeared back to his chamber of secrets. Chapter 109, Letter and a Mysterious Person 
November 1994. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. When Harry reappeared next, he was back in chambers. Today had been really eventful day. It was hard to believe that so much had happened in a single day. It was finally time to settle down and take a rest. But the day was not over yet. Harry changed his robes into a sleepwear and was about to lay down when his eyes flickered onto the tables where a pile of letter had been placed. A simple ward ensured, all of Harry's letters to be delivered a certain location from where one of his elves would collect and them and bring it to Harry. Normally, Harry hardly received any letter but today it was pile. Harry thought it would be better to check on them before sleeping. He took the letter one by one and started reading them. Most of these letters were from other lords and had contained congratulatory messages for Harry. Few tried to flatter Harry, while few offered him help and advice when required. Few went some steps ahead and hinted if they could form some kind of cooperation, not an equal cooperation but of the kind where Harry would throw his wealth away and they would loot it. Going through these letters Harry started to feel bored when a certain letter caught his attention. The envelope of the letter was made of one of the finest qualities of paper Harry had ever seen in his life. Surprisingly, the envelope did not contain any name of the sender. This was what drew Harry's attention as the rest of the letters had the names of the sender plastered in big bold letters so that he does not forget who sent it. Curiously, Harry tore open the envelope and pulled the page of the letter from inside. The paper used for the letter was of even better quality and felt soft and smooth to Harry's hands. He unfolded the letter. Lord Black. I hope this letter finds you in good health. The choice of greeting intrigued Harry. Most people would generally refer to him as Lord Potter. But here he was refereed as Lord Black. He read ahead. I must say that when I learned of the spectacular stunt that you pulled in the Wisengamot, I was taken aback in surprise and shock. Having said this, I congratulate you on securing five lordship. Five such powerful lordship in such a young age. You are a shrewd man, Lord Black. You hid yourself so deeply. I must admit, watching Albus Dumbledore in that much shock and then being ripped of the position that he loved so much was really pleasurable. Who would have expected that the boy hiding behind Dumbledore's robes till now was hiding so much power in his arsenal? You must be wondering, who am I and what is the purpose of this letter? Usually, I am person with a very deceiving nature. I choose my words carefully and never show my cards before the last move. But I believe that this approach would not work on you. Rather, I believe that, I must be honest and truthful with you especially when I have taken the opportunity to approach you. Therefore, I will come clean. I want to do a certain trade with you, Lord Black. I will provide you with very valuable information, something that can change the trajectory of the whole wizarding world. In return, you must do a small act. I promise, this act won't any difference to you, but it will change my whole life. I know you may doubt that this may be a trap to lure you out in an ambush not necessarily a death trap but a political trap. But to have your doubts recovered, we will meet at a certain location. There is a certain place which for now can only be accessed by five people, including the two of us. I know you will understand. Meet me tomorrow morning. The letter ended abruptly, again without any identity. But Harry did not need it. He knew of that certain location and the person behind the letter. November 1994 Unknown Location in a certain dimly lit room, an old bearded man was sitting on a throne-like chair. Opposite him, across the table sat another man. The old man was swirling a glass in his hand, while his half-moon spectacles reflected the fire burning at the other end of the room. It seems that even after the embarrassment you faced today have not been broken, began Snape. Headmaster, he added in obvious sarcasms. Dumbledore did not reply for a moment and remained quiet. He finally opened his mouth, Severus you are a fool. Snape sneered at this while Dumbledore continued unperpetrated, much like Harry. He thinks that by gaining five lordships and reading few law books, he has suddenly turned a cunning man. He laughed in disdain, he is a fool. All that power, all that wealth, all that lordship and what he does? Call back the old debt and takes away my position of headmaster of Hogwarts. I must admit. I was caught off guard this time. I had never anticipated such a thing. But even so, this was the best result I could have hoped for. With that much power, Harry could have buried me alive, but as I said he is a fool. He continued with a smile, till now, I was hoping to win back Harry's trust. But now that the sides have been chosen, wands drawn, then why would I still go with the same soft approach? Harry won't know what hit him, the next time we meet. He laughed, 
his glistening bright and the air in the room was filled with power. Dumbledore's magical power, I still have a trump card left, Severus. Chapter 110, Meeting Kriaker. November 1994. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. After an eventful day, Harry had a peaceful sleep in the night. He woke up early, the next morning and got himself dressed. While he could have had his breakfast in the chamber itself, he chose to go to the Great Hall. Harry silently entered the Great Hall. Initially, no one took notice of him but soon all the attention was drawn towards him. He ignored the various gazes filled with all kind of the expressions and walked and sat next to Hermione. Good morning, Hermione, greeted Harry. Hermione did not reply immediately and looked at Harry with a slightly angry expression. She ultimately sighed, Morning, Harry. Though Harry understood what could be the matter, he still asked, What is the matter, Hermione? Hermione again remained quiet as if not wishing to engage in any conversation. But under Harry's curious gaze she relented, Harry, I understand you had your problems with Headmaster Dumbledore. But why remove him as a headmaster? Harry though did not want to hurt Hermione's feeling, he remained blunt, because I own Hogwarts. And I did not like the Dumbledore. Hermione gave Harry a speechless look. Look Hermione, continued Harry. He decided it would be the last time he would explain his point of view to maybe his only friend, who did not have a selfish interest. I understand your thinking. But tell me, did you not read the questions, Mrs. Tonks asked to Dumbledore and how he was unable to explain any single question. He pressed, how appropriate it is, to blame every single life-killing accident, I have been through his hands since my birth to negligence, a mistake. Can he really brush off his responsibility, simply by saying, added Harry further and mimicked Dumbledore. I admit, I have made a slight mistake. Hermione remained quite unable to argue Harry on any point. She knew and understood the reality very well, but it was just her worship and respect for authority, making her question the harshness of Harry's action. Think Hermione, think, said Harry. Just because he is an old man with a reputation and numerous posts does not mean that he is infallible. Hermione nodded in days while Harry busied himself with his breakfast. Meanwhile, he did not notice a certain red-haired individual looking at him, from a distance with hate, jealousy, envy, in his eyes. Ron Weasley wanted all that power. All that money. He envied how Harry could donate 100,000 galleons so casually. How casually he announced to fund professors in their research. And now that Harry had become rich, Harry had parted ways with his best friend. How did he not want to share his riches with his best friend? After his breakfast, Harry walked to a secluded corridor of the Hogwarts and vanished away. November 1994 Unknown Location When Harry reappeared, he was standing on a wide street. A Muggle Street. In front him stood a towering and beautiful house built of stones. Twelve Grimwald Palace, the ancestral home of the Blacks. It was truly an irony that a family known for its Muggle hatred, lived in a Muggle locality. Without any hesitation, Harry took few steps forward and arrived at the main gate of the house. He pushed the gate and next moment, he felt the wards of the house scanning him. The process was short and the gates opened instantly. But the wards did not stop at scanning Harry, it finally settled onto him as he took control over the house, which had been long due. He had taken a few steps inside the hall, when a dirty-looking house elf popped in front of him. Harry was not surprised as he had felt a certain presence from the wards, when he took control of it. The elf was nothing like how a black family elf should be. His eyes were bloodshot and he looked on the verge of the death. Even so, Harry instinctively recognized the elf from Voldemort's memories. He was the same elf, Regulus Black had given Voldemort to test the defenses of the Slytherin's locket hidden in the cave. Harry was surprised to see the elf alive and what surprised him even more was the small locket hanging on Kriaker's neck. It was the Horcrux, the Slytherin's locket. Who are you? asked Kriaker in an aggressive tone. Before Har could continue, he himself stammered, You are the half-blood Harry Potter, the new Black Lord. It appeared that Kriaker was quite updated with the current affairs and had the same blood supremacy as the most of the Black family. Harry ignored the question, Kriaker, should you not greet your new Black Lord? Kriaker gritted his teeth, Magic tells me, but you are half-blood. Harry chuckled, Interesting. His gaze shifted towards Kriaker's neck, how did you get this locket, Kriaker? Kriaker fearfully took few steps back, you. I will not give it. Did Regulus back give it to you? Asked Harry further. Kriaker's eye widened at this. 
What did he say? Asked Harry further. Did he ask you destroy it? Kriaker trembled violently, how do you know? Harry shrugged, that is not important, Kriaker. What is important that you have failed in destroying it? Kriaker's next reaction took Harry by surprise as he broke down into tears. Kriaker's has been a bad elf, he felt to fulfill his master's last order, he wept. Harry shook his head, why don't I help you in fulfilling your master orders? Kriaker looked at Harry with white eyes, you will help, Kriaker. Harry nodded and extended his hand but Kriaker again backed off. I will not give the locket, said Kriaker. Do it in front of me. Harry thought better not to argue with an almost insane elf, okay, but I cannot do it right now. I have few more such things to destroy and I will destroy them together. Till then you can keep the locket but you cannot wear it. Keep it in a wooden box. Harry stopped at this. Our guest is here, muttered Harry. Go and do as I told you. Thanks for listening.